All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about Ajax. Before we get into our coding, I just want to touch on what Ajax is and how it works. So Ajax stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And don't let that name throw you off. You don't need to know XML to use Ajax. In fact, JSON or JavaScript Object Notation is used much more with Ajax than XML is, at least at this time. So Ajax is used to update specific parts of a web page without reloading the whole page. And it works by exchanging small amounts of data with the server behind the scenes. Okay, so it can make HTTP requests without having to refresh the entire page. All right, applications like Gmail, Google Maps, YouTube, and Facebook all use Ajax in some way. So let's take a quick look at how Ajax works. So it starts out with some kind of event, whether it's a page load, a button click, a form submit, whatever it may be. And a special object called an XML HTTP request object is created. And that's basically the foundation of Ajax. And that'll send an HTTP request behind the scenes to the server. The server will then process it. It'll create a response and then send it back to the browser. And then the browser will update uh, the page accordingly. All right, so the XML HTTP request object is an API that provides client functionality for transferring data between a client and a server and it's compatible with just about every version of every browser and uh, it gives us a behind the scenes way to transfer data alright like I said before it's not limited to XML it can use JSON it can use uh, a file protocol it can use FTP and so on so since the XML HTTP request object is an object it has properties and it has methods. Now I'm not going to go over all of these in depth, but some of the ones we'll be working with on ready state change, which fires off when the ready state property changes. Um, response will return either an object or a document or a DOM string. Um, response text contains the request as pure text. Response type is an enumerated value that defines the type. Uh, what else? Status will give us either 200 if everything's okay or 404 if there's some kind of page error. Uh, and then the rest of these time out, we're not going to really get into that. But these are the properties that are available. Okay, we also have methods. We have abort, which will abort the current request. And we can set the request header with get response header. Open is uh, is used to initialize a request and then send will obviously send the request okay so we'll get into some of that uh, in a little bit so this is a simple example of how to create our XHR object alright when I say XHR I mean the XML HTTP request object which is kinda long to say but we're just creating a variable here and then we're checking to see if it's available of this window dot XML HTTP request now this should be true in all modern browsers um, I think that IE6 is the, the, the last one that doesn't uh, allow this so if you want you can also say else here and then you need to use this new ActiveX object um, this is for like I said IE5 IE6 um, it's not even you don't even need to include this really but basically to create it we're going to take our variable and say new XML HTTP request and that should create the object. So sending requests we can use the open method and then you're going to pass in what type of request in this case it's a get request and then the URL or the file name in this case it's just a text file alright and then to actually send it you want to use dot send now get and post are two different um, requests that we can use get is faster but uh, it's much less secure and should only be used to do things like request data from a server post is used to do things like send data to the server uh, send user input things like that alright so a good example for a get request would be a search form alright you're not actually posting sensitive data to a server you're just trying to receive some 
uh, information based on your parameters. All right, a post would be used for something like a user registration form. So getting a response, this is just an example that I grabbed from the documentation. You can see that we're getting a response XML, so it'll be an XML format. Down here, we're just using some standard JavaScript get elements by tag name. All right, so basically that would look for any artist tag. And then we have a loop that's going to loop through and grab all the artists. And then down here, put it into a, uh, an element that has an ID of demo. All right, and, and we'll do this uh, in, in a little bit. Not this exact code, but something like it. All right, so we also have events. We have on ready state, and this stores a function to be called every time the ready state changes. All right, so you have this ready state event, and it has um, five states. It has zero through four. So zero is not initialized. One is when a connection is established. Two is when the request is received. Three is when it's processed, and then four is when it's finished. All right, and then you also have a status, which will be 200 if, if everything's okay, and 404 if it's a page not found. All right, so in our code, we're going to want to test to see what state we're at. Okay, we're not going to want to move forward until we're at four, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so let's jump into some code, and I can give you uh, some examples. All right, guys, so we're going to jump in and just do a little bit of Ajax. And what I want to do is create a button, and then when we click that, I want to use the XHR object to basically make a request and then bring in a text file into a certain area in our page. So I have this index.html file and I'm going to create another file alongside it called file.txt. And then we'll open that up and I'm just going to say, we'll say this text is from the file.txt file save it and close it all right so let's go back into our index page and we're going to let's see create a button and let's go ahead and add an on click to that and when it's clicked let's say we have a function called change text all right, and then underneath it, actually, let's go above it. We'll put an H1, and we'll say change this text. Okay, we'll put a line break here, save it, and that's what it should look like. Oh, we need to put some text in here. Okay, now in our script tags, we're going to want to create a function called change text. All right, now we're going to create our XHR object. So let's create a variable called X, uh, XHTTP. We're going to set it to new XML HTTP request. All right, and then we can take that object, um, XHTTP, and we're going to call the on ready state change. Okay, on ready state change. And let's set that to function. And then we're going to do an if statement. Okay, remember how it has different states? We want to check to make sure it's it's uh it's ready state is equal to 4. So x http dot ready state is equal to four and we will also want to check the status remember the status uh, if everything's okay should be 200 so we're going to say xhttp dot status equals 200 okay so when that's true we know that everything's okay and what we want to do is get the response text so let's say console.log um, xhttp dot response text. Okay, now remember we have to run the open and then send. So down here, 
outside of the if, um, we're going to do I want to be outside of this function, which ends here. So right here, we're going to say xhttp dot open, and this is going to be a get request. And then the, the URL or the file, the um, location is going to be file.txt. And then we're also going to set true. All right, now that's the last thing we need to do is run send. Okay. So let's go ahead and save that. And in, actually, you know, instead of the console, console log I don't want to do that I want to change the h1 so we'll say uh, let's see let's put a ID on this h1 we'll just say um, main text all right so down here we'll do document dot get element by ID main text dot inner HTML equals and we're going to set it to that response text all right so let's go ahead and save that and reload if I click the button let's see if we're getting any errors oh since we're in Chrome and we're not you we're not on a um, web server or anything like that it's just a file it's giving us this error now you could upload it to something like an Apache server or something but uh, if you want you can just use Firefox because they don't have this limitation so I'm gonna open up Firefox real quick and let's go ahead and paste that in and if I click change now you can see we're getting this text is from file.txt alright so that's how uh, Ajax and the XHR method works, so the XHR object. Now I'm going to stop here and in the next video we're going to continue on with this stuff. Instead of just getting uh, text from a file, we're going to use the GitHub API, which um, is, a, is a JSON API service that we can use to get information from developers that are registered at GitHub and have uh, profiles and repositories. All right, so we will get into that next.